Well, from the data in your wallet to the kind that you can wear, Intel is betting big on wearable computing and chipmaker and investing not in heavyweights like Nike or even Fitbit, but instead Intel backing Recon Instruments, one of the first makers of wearable displays for athletes like bikers, golfers, swimmers, you name it. With me now joining me is, is Recon Instruments co-founder and CEO Dan Eisenhart. Dan, good to see you again. Thanks, um, We met a few months ago at this Intel event, and the Intel guys, all the way up, Brian Kersanich, CEO, very excited about the potential for your business. And he wasn't just talking about ski goggles. What, what, what is it do you think that's got Intel so jazzed about this? Well, I think this technology can go really far. We've always focused on athletes as specific use cases. So in that sense, we're different from somebody like Google Glass, uh, who's more targeting the everyday use case. So we're creating very targeted software experiences uh, that provide relevant information for, for, the, for the right context. So for example, the, you, the, your ski goggles, or in my case, it would be snowboard goggles. But uh, those goggles uh, are interesting. They've got that little heads-up display kind of in the corner. Uh, describe it to me. Yeah, so the heads-up display is right underneath uh, the right eye. So it's very non-distracting. So when you're performing your activity, you can still focus on where you're going. And when you need the information, you just glance down, and you'll see a dashboard with the metrics that mean something to you in that moment in time. So in that, in that sense, it's very contextually relevant, but it's not distracting. And, and cycling as well seems like an obvious one for you. You showed me sort of a demo of something when I saw you uh, the, for cyclists. Yeah, cycling is the lead use case, uh, triathletes as well. Uh, but for athletes, will buy any, uh, in my experience, <laughs> will buy any piece of equipment you can possibly sell. They're, and they're very price insensitive, so that's, that's great. Anything that can give them an edge, uh, that they'll buy. But I think, you know, there's many other use cases as well. You've mentioned some of them. Uh, but I think running, you know, cycling, uh, sorry, hunting, sailing, uh, there are many out there, and I think it's just uh, the sky's the limit here. Now, the Google Glass has this notion. It has, it's, it's gotten a lot of attention. I think it's a really interesting thing. I find it impractical, maybe even ridiculous looking, but that's just me. Uh, what is the, 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 the Google Glass approach to the business of wearable that you can tell at this point compared to what you're doing? Well, I think Google Glass has some challenges in terms of social acceptability, privacy concerns. Right, restaurants that ban the use of them and, and yeah. ban people from complaining it, about it. Exactly. So there's been a lot of issues there. I think privacy concerns and, and the, and the full-day, all-day battery uh, supply. Uh, I think there's a lot of smart people at Google, so I'm sure they'll over overcome those challenges. Uh, but I think one of the most important elements is the need for individualization. People want something that's fashionable. They don't want to look like everybody else out there in the streets. So they're going to have to overcome this. Uh, for us in sports, it's a little bit different. You're already wearing spandex if you're out on your bike, so you don't... Uh, you, you already look like a fool. What you, difference you, is going to make you, you wearing funny looking Of course, glass. it has to look good still, and that's obviously Recon Jet, which is our smart glass product, looks, we think, looks great. But uh, it's something that we have a market that we've validated already with our snow goggles. We've sold over 50,000 units to date. You sold so, 50,000 of the snow goggles? Yeah. That's a so lot. That, it's great. So we've got and a lot they're of like, they're, they're not cheap. They're like 400 bucks. They're, they're four to $650. But we work with some of the biggest fashion eyewear brands in the world, like Oakley and Smith Optics and Scott, uh, to bring this to the consumers. So we really understand the need for, for fashion, for individualization. And, uh, and that's something that I think is a lesson that can be learned for wearable technologies going forward. Is, is it going to be necessary as this business grows to be really focused on small verticals like that? Because I think that's one of the interesting things we've seen in the app business, for example. Mm -hmm. Open Table works for restaurants. It's yeah. not for booking everything. Uber works for cars quite well, for cars. Do you, are you going to need that sort of specialization to be successful in wearable? I think so. I mean, we're all solving the same problem. Like Bill Wasik from Wired Magazine said, you know, we're all trying to bring that crucial data to our attention when it would otherwise not be available. It would be in our pocket. So we're solving the same problem. But I think going for a horizontal, which is the mainstream markets, is very, very challenging. Going for the verticals, you know, it's a little bit easier. It's still challenging. But I think that's how you eventually will build the horizontal. Fascinating stuff. Dan Eisenhart from Recon Instruments, a really cool company and interesting stuff in the future. Now, good stuff.